بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which is the vocabulary building of the unit 4 TV around the world which is the lesson that will prepare us for the reading lesson uh, later so before we do that, let's just uh, take some exercises from the workbook, page 114, just to refresh our m memory f for, uh, from our previous lessons. Uh, underline the direct and indirect objects. So we're talking about direct and indirect objects from the grammar lesson. Uh, write DO for direct object and IO for the indirect object. For example, here Camilla gave the laptop to Sarah. So as you see here, the laptop is the direct object. Sarah is the indirect object. So we'll be doing like this. We will underline the direct and the indirect, and we will tell which is which, which is the indirect object by I-O, and which is the direct object by D-O. So let's start with the first one here. She told me a secret. She told me a secret. So where's the... Uh, direct and indirect object here. The first one, she told me a secret. Okay, let's check the answer together. So, me is the indirect object and the direct object is a secret. Me is the indirect object and the direct object is secret. Excellent. Number two, he wrote the poem for his wife. He wrote the poem for his wife. We have two objects here, which is direct and which is indirect. Okay, let's check the answer together. So, the direct object is the poem for, and then his wife is the indirect object. So, his wife is the indirect object, the poem is the direct object. Number three, Badr cooked us dinner. Badr cooked us dinner. Again, we have two objects, which is direct and which is indirect. Okay, let's check it. So, better cooked. Us is the indirect. Dinner is the uh, direct object. Number four, I sent the producer a letter. I sent the producer a letter, which is which here, which is direct and indirect. Let's check it together. So, the producer is the indirect and a letter is the direct object. Continuing here with number five. Will you make me some coffee? Will you make me some coffee? Which is direct and which is indirect here? Yes, the me is the indirect, coffee is the direct. Number six, they will give the prize to the best athlete. We have two objects here. Okay, so the uh, direct object is the prize and the best athlete is the indirect object. Number seven, Tom played the show for them. Okay, show or the show is the direct object, indirect object is them. Marisa bought me a present. Marisa bought me a present. Yes, me is the indirect, a present is the direct uh, object. Number nine, the judges give the winner 100,000 Saudi Riyals. Again, the judges give the winner 100,000 Saudi Riyals. Excellent. The winner is the indirect 100,000 Saudi Riyals is the direct object. Number 10, would you show me the email? Would you show me the email? Okay, so me is the indirect do is the direct object. Continuing here with the exercise D, rewrite the sentences in the same page 114. Rewrite the sentences uh, another way. Change the order of the direct and indirect objects in each sentence. If not possible cha uh, to change the order, write not possible. So we will be having a, a sentence and try to change it for the direct and the indirect object. Again, rewrite the sentences another way. Change the order of the direct and indirect object in each sentence. If it's not possible, remember, if it's not possible, just write not possible. We have some examples here. The actor 
read the lines for the director. How to, do we change the order here? We say the actor read the director the lines. The, uh, the actor read the director the lines. The second one, his dad bought it for him. His dad bought it for him. You can see here that it's not possible. It's not possible. So, number one, they bought her a new laptop. They bought her a new laptop. So, how do we change this? Change the order of the direct and indirect object here. And remember, if it's not possible, just say not possible. He, uh, uh, they bought her a new laptop. So, how do we change it? They bought a new laptop for her. They bought a new laptop, which is the direct object here. For her, her here is the indirect object. Excellent. Number two, could you give me the remote control? Could, uh, could you give me the remote control? So how do we change it? Okay, let's check together. Could you give the remote control to me? Could you give the remote control to me? So me here is the indirect and remote is the direct. Number three, Terry opened it for me. Pay attention here. Terry opened it for me. So check your answer again. Terry opened it for me. So this is not possible. Excellent. This is not possible. Number four. He lent his car to a friend. He lent his car to a friend. So here we have two objects. This is very obvious. So what do we say here? Yes. He lent a friend his car. He lent a friend his car. Excellent. Number five, Faisal gave pictures to his fans. Faisal gave pictures to his fans. So here it's very obvious we have two objects. Faisal gave his fans pictures. Faisal, maybe he's very famous because he has fans here. Faisal gave his fans picture. What about number six here? Will you fix it for me? And check your answer here. Will you fix it for me? Yes, excellent. This is not possible. Sarah translated the show for us. Sarah translated the show for us. Yes, again, this is not possible. What about number eight? The host gave the guest star a cup of coffee. The host gave the guest star a cup of coffee. So here we have two objects. Yes, the, the host gave a cup of coffee to the guest star. So the guest star here is the indirect object and the direct object is a cup of coffee. Let's continue here with uh, the workbook, page 115. Complete the conversation with, uh, uh, with four or two. Uh, they are game show contestant and they are trying to create uh, an advertising poster to promote their product. So we have a conversation and we have to fill the gaps using four or two. So let's read it together. Carson, Fahad, is that you? Fahad, yes, it's me. I don't have the address of the stationery store. Can you, give, uh, can you give it to me? So the first one is already done. Carson, you mean you haven't bought the paper and paints that we need? You can't just expect me make this poster on my own without any materials. So you can't just accept, expect me, number one here, is it to make or for make? Yes, to make this poster on my own. Fahad, Carson, you promised not speak to me. So you promised not to speak to me or for speak to me? Yes, this is very obvious, not to speak to me. Carson said, I promised what? Fahad, that you wouldn't lose your cool, that you wouldn't speak me like this again. So number three here, 
Yes, that you wouldn't speak to me like this again. Carson, okay, Fahad, I'm sorry, but I'm really stressed. I have to make the best poster possible. All of us. Yes, for all of us. Our whole team. That's quite a responsibility. Fahad, I know, and I want to help you. That's why I offered go and find the stuff you so here we have two gaps again and i want to help you that's why i offered yes to go and find the stuff excellent for you not to you for you no one else offered i know it's not fair it uh, it should concern all of us but carson okay the store is on the corner of uh, Poplar and 25th Street. You can't miss it. It has a huge sign that says, Best Art Supplies. Fahad, right. I see it now. I have to go. I'll have news to you or for you shortly. Yes, I'll have news for you shortly. Carson, great. Thanks. And I'm sorry I spoke... Yes, to you the way I did. Oh, forget it. I'll get some food. Yes, for us on the way back. And I'll ask them to deliver the supplies. Yes, to our studio immediately. See you later. See you later. And remember our previous uh, lesson, the listening part. We listened to the conversation between the quiz show host and the contestant. We listed the things that have positive uh, impact on Imad's uh, performance and the negative impact on Imad's performance. If you remember, we listened to the story of the contestant uh, named Imad. He said the positives are a fantastic trainer, his family and his mental and physical shape and the negative impact, a broken toe. If you remember when the hammer fell, uh, fell on his toe, also his father in a hospital and that he woke up having a cold. And he also uh, took the short version of going to and want to. We, say, we said going to, we say gonna. Want to, we said wanna. I want to go, I'm gonna go. So we don't say I want to, you say I want to go. When you say I'm going to go, you say I'm gonna go. So this is the short uh, version of uh, going to and want to. So this is today's lesson. The objective here, match words with their meaning. So we'll be learning some new words that will happen to be in the reading next lesson. So this is the vocabulary building uh, here. Uh, you will see these words in the reading on pages uh, for, uh, 54 and 55 match the words with their meaning. So we have seven words here and seven definitions here for the words. We'll have to match them with their meanings. Let's, uh, let's read the words first. We have evolution, distinct, a prototype, transmit, patent, milestone, and affluence. Again, evolution, distinct, a prototype, transmit, patent, milestone, and affluence. So number one, evolution. In which of these, uh, uh, in which of these sentences does evolution fit? Which of these definition, definitions does evolution uh, fit? Uh, but before we do that, read the definitions first by yourself so you could tell which is correct. So evolution, is it A or B or C or D, etc. Evolution, it's the letter B. The gradual change and development of an idea. The gradual, gradual means step by step, slowly. The gradual change and development of an idea. If an, if an idea or anything is slowly developing, this is evolution. What about number two? Distinct. Number two, distinct. Let's check the answer together. The letter G, clearly different. When you say something that is distinct, it means that is clearly, obviously that this thing is different. So distinct means different. Prototype. 
Prototype, you hear this word a lot in industry. Prototype, let's check uh, together the letter uh, C. A model used to test a new machine, car, etc. So as I said before, you will hear it a lot in industry, especially car industries. Prototype, a model used to test a new machine, car, etc. So just a model, not the original thing, a model just to test the car, the phone, the PC, etc. So it's not the final product, a product it's just a prototype. Uh, number four, transmit. Transmit, yes, with the letter F, to send out. If you send something out, you're transmitting a signal maybe or something else. So this is transmit to send out. Number five. Yes, with the letter E, obtain the right to make or sell a new invention or product. Obtain the right to make or sell a new invention or a product. What about number six, milestone? Milestone. Yes, it's the letter D, a very important event in the development of uh, something. What about the last one, affluence, number seven? Yes, it's the letter A, having plenty of money and possessions. So affluence means having plenty of money and possessions, uh, uh, having plenty of money and possessions like maybe cars, uh, houses, maybe yachts. Why not? So this is, so these are the words and their meanings. And uh, pay attention that these words will come in our next uh, lesson in the reading lesson we will find them in these sentences the word uh, evolution uh, we'll find it in this sentence uh, the work of many people over a number of decades contributed to its evolution so pay attention to the context here the work of many people over a number of decades contributed to its evolution the second word distinct meaning different if you remember Two distinct schools of thought in technology influenced different researchers and the course of their investigation. Two distinct schools of thought, different schools in technology influenced different researchers and the causes of their investigation. Prototype, prototype, if you remember, it means the first product where, you t where they test the car or the phone. However, it is nuclear whether Nipko actually built a working prototype of his television system. Transmit, if you remember, transmit meaning send is to send something. Fellow Franz Worth, uh, 1906 to 1971, was the first inventor to transmit a television image, a dollar sign, using the dissector tube, with, which is the basis of all current electronic television. So he was the first inventor to transmit television image, Philo uh, Franzworth. Of course, we'll be reading about him later in the reading uh, lesson. The word patent, in actual fact, the earliest proposal for color television was patented in 1904. Milestone, his work included a number of technological milestones in the history of television. Again, in his, uh, his work, included a number of technological milestones in the history of television. Affluence, if you remember affluence meaning, yes, to be rich and wealthy and having uh, possessions, expensive possessions, of course, horses, uh, ho uh, houses, maybe horses, why not? Yachts, houses, etc. Until recently, a plasma television screen was regarded to some extent, a symbol of affluence or status along with other possessions. Again, until recently, this is a, a, an actual fact, this is interesting. In re, uh, until recently, a plasma television screen was regarded to some extent a symbol of affluence or status along with other uh, possessions, meaning that uh, later in the last years, if you had a plasma TV, this gives a sign that you are rich, uh, you have uh, expensive uh, possessions, you are a symbol, it was a symbol of affluence or status along with other 
position. So if you own a plasma TV, and in the years they're talking, that's talking about here in these lines, if you own a plasma TV, this means that you are uh, rich, uh, wealthy, or affluent. And with that, we reached the end of this lesson. See you next lesson, insha'Allah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.